Hi all, many of you have been having various queries as to how to use the pre-trained large language models from Hugging Face Hub. You would want to build your own solutions such as question answering, summarization, text classification or even text generation using the various pre-trained models. In the earlier videos, we talked about fine tuning and how you could fine tune some of these models for specific tasks. In this particular video, we are going to understand how you can use Hugging Face Hub pre-trained models in order to build your own custom solutions using the Transformers library. So in order to do so, we need to understand three things. We need to understand tokenizers, auto models, and how do we choose the right model for the task. So first of all, we need to import the Transformers library. So we install the pip install Transformers. And next, you have to install either TensorFlow or PyTorch in your environment. I already have Torch in my environment, so I'm not going to reinstall it. Let me show you the version of the Torch that I have. I have Torch 2.0.1. You could install this same version and it just works fine. Make sure to have Torch version 2 or above. Okay. Now the next thing is understand how tokenizers work. So understand whenever you pass a raw input such as generative AI is fun, it cannot be processed directly by the transformer model, right? You have to do some processing on top of this raw text. The processing goes as follows. So this raw text is broken down into tokens and subtokens. What are subtokens? A subtoken could be smaller than word. For example, the word generative here is broken down into two subtokens, generate and IV. This is based on how frequent a particular subtoken appears in the input corpus that we that was originally used for training this large language model. Okay, and this varies based on the different models and different input corpus that was used. So based on this, subtokens are generated. Now these subtokens are further converted into integers or further assigned integers, which are then parts to an input embedding. Okay. The embedding is of a fixed dimension and that embedding is used for further processing in the transformer model. Additionally, what tokenizers do? Tokenizers also add some special tokens such as EOS token, CLS token or PAD tokens wherever necessary and wherever we specify in order to help in the processing. Okay, So you understand the role of tokenizers here and how tokenizers help you. Let us load a tokenizer and see things how it works. Okay, so from transformers import auto tokenizer. Auto tokenizer is a module that helps you load all the tokenizers that are available across Hugging Face Hub. Also remember, each tokenizer corresponds to a specific transformer model only. Okay, so corresponding to each of the transformer model that we are going to use, we need to upload or we need to load a separate tokenizer corresponding to that model. So here we load, we use the model ID distilled GPT-2. When we understand in the third step how to select the models, we shall see how do we go about and select these model IDs. And here we are using currently distilled GPT-2, which is which is actually trained for text generation tasks. Okay, we load the tokenizer as auto tokenizer dot from pre -trained. We pass the model ID and we set padding side equal to left. Now, since we shall be running a batch of input, we shall be passing multiple inputs in the same batch, we need to provide padding because each of those inputs might be of different length. And since G Distill GPT-2 is a text generation model, we would ideally want our padding tokens to appear on the left so that when the text generation continues, our pads must not appear in between the generated text and our original text. Okay, so that is why we choose padding side equal to left. You can very well choose right, it's not a problem. Next, we need to set the pad token. If the tokenizer.pad token is done, we set pad token as EOS token. Okay, in case you want to use any new token, it might generate errors if the token is not ideally used in the text generation or in the training process. So it's advisable to use this use an existing token within the tokenizer itself. So this is how we load our tokenizer. Now once we have loaded our tokenizer, we sh we have sample raw inputs here and we shall pass these raw inputs to our tokenizer 
we set truncation equal to true in order if the length of these raw inputs exceed the maximum length for that model we also set padding is true and we return tensors return tensors is used to specify that we want pytorch tensors okay now let me show you the in oh, just a second let me load this Let me, I just want you to show the inputs that are being generated or what is processed as part of the tokenizer. So once we pass the raw inputs to the tokenizer, we generate two things, the input IDs and the attention mask. These input IDs are the integers corresponding to each of the sub tokens that we have, right? And this, this will be specific to each sub token. If the sub token is repeated, say for example here 40 and 40, perhaps one of the sub tokens have been repeated, right? So each of these integers is assigned to a specific sub token only so that after the output is generated in the form of these IDs again, we can convert them back to the original text. An attention mask is used to specify which tokens are our actual input tokens and which are our paddings or other special tokens. Okay, So wherever we have 1, it corresponds to our actual token and wherever we have zero, it corresponds to some kind of padding or EOS token or any other special token. Input zero dot tokens, if I do, then we will get the list of tokens that were generated. I have been waiting for a hugging face. See, hugging has been broken down into two tokens, hug and king face codes my whole life. So there are some special tokens that also come across with each of the sub tokens here. Uh, I myself do not know specifically what this token is known as but this again varies based on each of the models. Similarly the other token other input that was smaller in length have additional padding tokens towards the left. If you see EOS end of text tokens have been added here for and same for the third input. Now we will load a model right we shall load a pre-trained model from the hugging face up. For that, let me show you first using auto model. So whenever we load a model using auto model, what happens is we are loading the base model without any task head. So this task head which I am talking about is for example, you have a base model that is trained using say MLM, mask language model. Now you have trained this model, but this model will generate certain outputs in the form of uh, uh, a certain representation. Let me, let me just run and show you. This will make things more clear. Okay. So when this above code is executed, the base model without any head is installed. And uh, let me show you the output here. This will help you understand the things better. You see, this is the base model output with past and cross attentions, and it gives us the last hidden state. So this last hidden state is an embedding that can be used for training further tasks, say for example classification task, sequence classification, token classification, text summarization or any task as you require. Right? However, we would want our models to perform specific tasks, say sequence classification or text generation. So for that, we have three different types of auto models such as auto model for sequence classification which are used for text classification tasks auto model for causal LM, which are used for language modeling tasks such as text generation or summarization and auto model for question answering. There are additional auto models which are auto model with LM head for pre-training, token classification, TF auto model. TF auto models are specifically for TensorFlow based use cases, right? Currently we are using torch based. Similarly, you have TensorFlow based. So using these three, you can Additionally, using token classification, using these auto models, you can load your pre-trained models corresponding to specific task heads. Our distilled GPT-2 is trained for text generation task, so we shall use auto model for causal LM. Okay, let let us see how this works. So from transformers, import auto model for causal LM. We load our model auto model for causal LM dot from pre-trained and pass the model ID. Model ID is distilled GPT-2. Now, in case of text generation task, we call causal model or the model dot generate pass the input. We specify the number of new tokens that we want to generate and temperature is something that controls probabilistic output. If temperature is set to zero, then each iteration would give you same output. However, if temperature is greater than zero, 
up to 1 the outputs might vary based on certain probability ok let me run this and show you and the output would generated would be something as this now these you see these look similar to the input IDs that we saw earlier right now how would you translate these input IDs back to the actual text so let me show you this is the raw input the first raw input that we have provided now in order to convert these back to these textual form we call tokenizer dot decode and pass the corresponding output so you see we had the input as I have been waiting for the hugging face course my whole life and the generated text is also similar I have been waiting for a hugging face course so this still GPT-2 here is not doing a very good job in text generation it is simply repeating the uh, existing sentence or input that we provided but still you can see text is being generated so our pipeline seems to be fine. Distal GPT-2 is a smaller model and therefore sometimes things don't work as you expect them to be but that's absolutely fine. You understand how things are working. Okay. I will also show you regarding the another task which is the text classification task for which we need to use another model because Distal GPT-2 is not trained for classification. So we use a model that is actually trained for a classification task. So Distal Bird Base Uncased Fine Tuned SS T to English. So here let me show you how do we select the models from Hugging Face Hub. Okay, let's he head back to the Hugging Face Hub portal. So now we are in the Hugging Face Hub portal where we click on models. So under models you see there are various options. How do you want to choose the model? Task based models, data set based, language based, license and other classifications. Let us go task based. So for task based if you go for multimodal task, computer vision based task, natural language processing, audio, tabular. So currently we are dealing with natural language processing tasks. So here we have multiple options such as text classification, token classification, table question answering, question answering, zero sort classification, translation and so on and so forth. So let us select text classification and let me show you how we came across uh, one of these bird based models. Okay, discrete bird. Now when I select this text classification task, you see there is a, around 33,690 models. So of these 33,690 models for text classification, how do we select it? Further, we have options to sort them based on trending, most likes, most downloads. So let me select the most downloads option. So when we go for most downloads option, you see the very first we got was Distal Bird Base Uncased. Now, one of the things that you need to take care of is the task that you want to use it for. Say for example, you want to have the classification based on English, right? or on the other hand you can search for other languages say Spanish see there are other models that are fine-tuned for Spanish classification so this is one of the filters that you need to apply the other filter is based on the size of the model you need to understand the limitations of each of the models and the size of your own compute resources right each of these models uh, could have billions of parameters and loading billions of parameters could require large uh, large compute resources on your end say for example a 7 GB 7 billion parameter model would require nearly 20 GB of RAM in your own system or in the compute environment that you are performing it here let me show you what is the size of this model distal bird would be around millions in parameter I don't know let's check it out here so learning rate is there maximum so here I don't think they have specified but in the original distal GPT-2 they have specified around 200 to 300 million parameters so that's a fair enough size for any small model that you want to experiment with on your own system if you don't have enough resources if you don't have enough RAM right so very well you can play around with these models and load in case you are not able to load any model try to see if the RAM is getting overfilled that is one of the primary reasons so you understand how do we select models let me show you another example let's so go for a question answering based where are the NLP tasks so here question table question answering question answering so if you go for question answering again you have multiple options deep set Roberta base squad 2 so Roberta base squad 2 is trained on squad data set okay this they will specify here this is the Roberta base model finding using the squad 2.0 data set it's been trained on question answering pairs 
they also provide you an example how to provide their input and output say this is the input question QA input that you need to provide for this model right and you see they have provided this auto model for question answering dot from pretend so you'll find these examples here there are evaluation results how this model performed on different data sets on different benchmarks all these are taken into consideration whenever you are going to utilize any model for your production environment right so here we will simply load this model perform the classification so we will load the tokenizer also we have the inputs we pass these inputs to the CLS model remember for text generation task we call CL for model dot generate however for other tasks such as text classification we, direct, we can directly call the model itself and we will get because this is a classification task based on two classes we shall get logits of the of this dimension right each of them will have two values we need to convert these logits into probabilities we did so using the softmax function we converted them into probabilities and we also see what are the labels associated to each of these classes so zero corresponds to negative and one corresponds to positive we use the argmax function to get the labels corresponding to each of our outputs okay from probabilities we now convert it to the labels so now you understand clearly how you can use the pre-trained models from hugging face hub using the transformers library in order to build your own custom solutions let us know in the comments what solutions are you going to build what are your results if you have faced any challenges put them down in the comments see you in the next lecture have a nice day bye bye jai hind if you like the content make sure to give it a thumbs up